Hello everyone! Today we're going to be talking about how to get paid from Amazon overseas. So if you've been thinking about or if you've already started expanding your business to other Amazon marketplaces like Amazon, Mexico, Canada, Europe, Japan, or if you've been using other e-commerce platforms and sell it internationally, then this video is for you because today we're going to be discussing a tool that is going to help keep more money in your pocket. We have been using this tool for three months now and we've been able to cut our fees in half because whenever you get paid by Amazon from a different currency, there's all these conversion fees involved. So today I'm going to be interviewing Ryan Kramer from Ping Pong Payments and we're going to be talking about all of the benefits of using this tool. And if you've been watching our videos for a while, you know that Sumner and I only recommend tools and services that we truly believe is going to bring value to you and your business and tools that we use there ourselves. And Ping Pong is definitely one of them. I'm very excited excited to share this with you. It is a free tool and we're going to be leaving all of the links in the description below. And if you have any questions after watching this video, also feel free to leave those in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. So without further ado, let's get to it. So welcome Ryan, we're so excited to have you here on the channel today. If you guys are not familiar with Ryan, he is the host of the Crossover Commerce podcast and it is made by ping pong so today we're going to be talking about more and more about this amazing tool as i mentioned to you guys here in the intro so ryan why don't you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you've been doing with ping pong yeah ali thank you so much for having me on today uh like you had mentioned before i have a podcast uh with my company uh it's called crossover commerce with ryan kramer and presented by ping pong payments kind of a mouthful but uh, what we wanted to do, and me specifically, is to educate people in the international aspect of growth opportunities for sellers who are not just selling in the United States, but they might be or is selling in one marketplace. But honestly, our vision for a company is to help people grow internationally and to make smarter financial decisions and have control over those the small things that Amazon doesn't let you otherwise have control over. Uh, we've seen them make choices and decisions where it affects business solutions in an instant, in one day. Uh, in our kind of realm of where we operate, you have those choices and you have those opportunities to actually save money and to have control over that. So that's a nice refreshing uh, topic, if you will, uh, where you have control over Amazon in certain aspects of the game. So yeah, but me specifically, my background is varying in the e-commerce I've worked for companies like Viral Lunch in the past, have sold on Amazon, uh, excuse me, sold online direct to consumer and built out old branded websites um, for companies who had 10,000 products uh, plus, and then also now working in FinTech. So this holistic view of how to help people sell on Amazon and e-commerce has really allowed me to get a really cool snapshot of what the industry is doing, but then also how can we help people grow moving forward? Yes, that's awesome because as you said, like you're able to create a tool having been on the other side and worked with other people and known the difficulties. And as you said, the aspect of not having control over so much on Amazon. So trying to take back a little bit of that control, especially financially, which could be overwhelming for people. Sometimes some Amazon sellers are great at the product development and the management, and then the finances become kind of like a, a last thought, which is really important. But actually, um, just I forgot to mention, we've actually been on the podcast, Sumner and I, on Crossover Commerce Podcast. So I'll be sure to leave the link for our video in the description below as well. But going back to Ping Pong, what are some of the services that Ping Pong offers? Great question. So most financial tech companies, you know, you you get thrown into this big jumbled topic of what what is a fintech company? By definition, it's handling money in one capacity or another, uh, payment processor. What are those things? So unlike a Stripe or a Venmo or something that talks directly to a consumer, we are a B two B solution that actually helps businesses grow, like e commerce sellers. We're strictly focused on. Amazon e-commerce businesses grow their uh, their portfolio, if you will. And we do that by working directly with banks all around the world in order for Amazon sellers like you guys to open up a bank account 
maybe not just in their local currency, but currencies around the world. So a lot of what Amazon sellers want to do eventually, I hope this is your goal too, is to start in one marketplace, but then start as your business starts to take off, you want to grow internationally as well, not just sell in one marketplace. Absolutely. You want to be available to people in Australia, people in uh, New Zealand, or you want to be in Germany, or you want to sell in Mexico or Canada, no matter where in the world, there's a lots of different regulations and ways to stand out from the crowd. But that being said, the financial aspect is a little tricky because us as a business, we have to be regulated globally and making sure that money is safe and secure, no matter where you're selling. So our, our entity has been around for almost six years now, and we've been regulated in every country we operate in and all marketplaces that we operate on. So you can use us on all Amazon marketplaces and marketplaces like uh, Rakuten, Wish, uh, I'm trying to think, your own Shopify store, uh, CD Discount, Mercado Libre, no matter where marketplace you can operate under, we're going to be able to solution to help you out. Uh, but what we do by definition is to help facilitate and save money when currency is converted, no matter whether it's sending or receiving money from an entity. So as Amazon sellers, you're receiving every two weeks a payout from Amazon. If I'm a seller in the United States and I'm selling in Germany, Amazon's going to be receiving the euro across the seas, but then they're going to convert it and put it in your bank account. You think that Amazon would be you know, nice enough to just put that money in your bank account. That's not the case. Uh, they actually, no matter who you're working with, there's always a conversion or a fee that gets associated when money converts, whether that's through a bank or through a service like ours, there's a fee that gets associated when money gets converted to a different currency. So that's by definition what we do. Okay. And my next question, you kind of started to answer already, which marketplaces can be integrated with ping pong. So you did mention Mercado Libre and Amazon. What about um, like eBay or, or mm -hmm. Etsy or any, any marketplace that you're able to sell abroad and receive money internationally, you're able to integrate with ping pong. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, there's a couple exceptions. So uh, Walmart specifically had an exclusivity with a different competitor of ours, but that is now slowly starting to become more available. And we're always listening to different customers and what they need. So by definition, we're going to be working really hard to get every opportunity out there. It's not, we're, we're never going to stop working to make sure every marketplace is going to be available for our customers. So that being said, uh, Walmart is the one that we don't naturally tie to. Um, but with eBay, you get, if you're receiving through PayPal, you can actually tie your ping pong account as a receiving funds through PayPal. So um, oh, really? that, that is a possibility. eBay actually recently uh, changed to their own processing unit. So like a Stripe uh, where you're processing credit card information, eBay is doing something very similar. So we're not a processor by any means. We are helping that, those funds once you receive them convert over to a different currency or just let it sit there in that currency. Um, but by definition, if you have a PayPal account, you can actually switch out instead of like your local bank account, you can use a ping pong account to, to use those funds and receive, receive it from there. Awesome. Okay. So when you talk about, you know, like getting some of the control back on your finances and we are trying to convince everyone here that it's better to use ping pong than, than to just let Amazon deposit directly into your account. But why is that? What is the, what are the actual benefits of using ping pong versus just connecting your national bank. Like if I'm in the U S just connecting my bank to my Amazon UK, for example, to get money from them. Yep. Fantastic question. So by definition, Amazon tries to make everything easier for you. And with ease comes cost or, you know, there, there's somewhere that you're going to pay for it down the road. Amazon has a new, believe it or not, just as of the 31st, they made this hard definition for this payment service provider network that they have people who they see as a participant that they see as a valuable asset to sellers to become a part of that participation in that network. So we are one of the very few companies that are an option besides Amazon doing those currency conversions for you. So that, that's the first thing is that Amazon's making this a regulated uh, partnership network in order to trust companies like Ping Pong in, or, uh, you know, 
they have these definitions that we have to fulfill and we are, you know, checking off all those boxes. So we are able to participate in this network. Oh, that, um, that being sense. said, yeah. So that being said, Amazon will do all these things for you. No, no questions about that, but there is a cost associated with it. So anytime money gets converted, no matter how big or small, there's going to be a fee associated with it. And Amazon is not a financial institution naturally in order to facilitate quote unquote small transactions. Again, for most sellers out there, you're going to be considered a small transaction, whether it's $10,000 or $100,000, that's still small in comparison to what Amazon's doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So that being said, anytime Amazon's working with that, they are paying fees with banks, any other entity that they're working third-party association in order to make that fulfillment of that payment. That being said, once money gets converted, they will charge you anywhere from two to, or one and a half if you're selling $10 million plus in a marketplace, uh, one and a half to 5% just to convert those funds from one currency to another. And again, this is after your FBA fees, your oversized fees, your long-term storage fees, all these other fees that you know Amazon is really good at uh, tacking on. That's at the end of the day when you think you have a profit and then it gets converted over to your bank account. So that that's, that's why it's important to know what, opportunities are out there. With the ping pong, we are directly working and partnered with banks like HSBC, Wells Fargo, Chase, City. We open up those digital bank, bank accounts and receiving accounts for sellers like you guys in, instead of having a in-person presence or at a local bank account in a different country around the world. So that's kind of what makes us different is we're able to save you time but in order to go to a different country to open up a bank account, okay. you don't have to hire someone locally, which is also a plus. Um, and then also you have the safety and security of working with tier one banks um, with them. So you know that your money's safe and secure. So because we have this great partnership network and we are able to directly not go through all these different third party entities, that's how we're able to save sellers, save money. And we charge no more than 1% on that, that, uh, FX fee. So Amazon's trading anywhere from one and a half to 5% instantaneously instead of receiving the euro with an Amazon bank account or your US bank account and let Amazon convert it, letting ping pong convert it, you're instantaneously saving 4% to you know, even half a person, which can add up quickly. Yes, that adds up really quickly. And one thing that before we started um, talking, I was just telling Ryan that when we signed up, we did not realize this, but it makes sense. So the way that ping pong works is imagine you have this um, little box and you're going to start receiving money from the different marketplaces that, that you're selling in. You can choose when you're going to withdraw money from that box from ping pong to your bank account so you can be very strategic on the exchange rate that ping pong also offers like it's it's constant like i believe every time i, I refresh 60 seconds yep. um you have the most up-to-date exchange rate so you can be smart about this and for example keep that money until that coin or that what is it called i forget the coin currency yeah currency. oh well currency yeah until that Bitcoin currency is completely goes different up. subject yeah <laughs> right until that currency goes up and ping pong takes one percent of the money that you received from amazon so let's say you received one thousand euros from amazon then ping pong is going to get 10 euros and then the exchange rate goes after that with the remaining um, amount that you have after the 1%, you can end up getting even more than if Amazon was depositing directly into your US account and it needs to be the exchange rate of that day. You can not just choose it. Yep. So I thought that was really cool. It gets me excited, like playing and planning when to actually withdraw the money. Or as you said, you can keep the money in, in the box, ping pong account, and then use it to send it and pay, for example, suppliers, right? Yep, yep, that, that's the other um, part of the component of what we're known for is uh, paying out. So either receiving funds like you just mentioned, and that's the thing is you can have those funds sit there for as long as you want. Only when it exchanges in currency is when we ping pong make money. So it can sit there for six months until you start accruing you know, 10,000 euros, another 5,000 euros, until you set either a automated amount that you wanted to convert over because here, here's the trick, and I'll leave this with your audience. 
every time money gets changed, exchanges hands, there's always a fee associated, no matter what, if yes. it's one, one business to another, if you can eliminate half or 90% of those transactions or those handoffs, then you're going to save money in your own pocket. And that's your money at the end of the day. We're just trying to make it that money that's left on the table, keeping more of it once it exchanges, because at the end of the day, uh, that's why we're in business online is to be either financially free or in a business where it's just margins are super thin. Why not add more to your bottom line so you can buy more product, uh, spend more on advertising, having another virtual assistant or another employee. So that's at the end of the day, use that money for greater purposes than just paying fees. Um, so yeah, when, when you mentioned Ali, when sending money, sending money is super, uh, when money is constantly coming and going, you need a holistic view of what actually money I'm actually sending out there. So writing checks or sending wires are constantly the headache of any financial regulator or accountants out there to see how much money I actually have at the end of the day. Because if I send it to my supplier, for example, uh, an international wire, I'm already paying international wire fees. I'm going to be paying any sort of buffer fees. And what that is, is your, your supplier is going to have this four to 5% upcharge, basically buffer percentage that they're going to charge you for receiving a foreign currency. Because yes. when they convert it, I can't use it. If I'm in China, for example, I don't have any use for the US dollar to pay out my employees. They can't use that to pay their bills or to feed their families. They need local currency. So in the uh, in China, it's the yuan is the local currency. So when money is converted, it takes time for it to get there first and foremost, convert over. And then once they have local currency, they can actually start paying their employees, buy the materials. Time actually just gets stretched out. So it's not beneficial for anyone in that that line or chain. So when you can have a great relationship with a supplier, you can actually negotiate cheaper rates by paying out in local currency, yeah. which is fantastic for our clients because we don't have a cap on how much in the yuan you can pay out. We're actually really special in that re regards is if I, I can do a hundred thousand dollars, I can do a couple million dollars in, in, in local currency payouts. That's, that's super valuable for your suppliers. And that's also cost savings for you as a seller. So in that regards, you can pay out your suppliers and manufacturers. You can pay your VAs like with pay, uh, payroll, pay them out in the um, Vietnamese currency, or you can the PHP if, um, or India, if you have entities over there, um, or even just people that you are freelancing for you around the world. So um, through like Upwork or any other kind of company business. like that. Yeah. Business like that, you're allowed to, you can actually pay out in local currency, which is everyone wins in that regard. So there's, there's little fees that you have to pay in that regard. So that's the other way that it's beneficial to pay out suppliers in that regards. And like I said, if you're keeping money in your Euro account and you're only exchanging over to uh, the, the PHP or in for India, or even in the Yuan, you're not going from the Euro to the US dollar, US dollar to uh, the PHP or um, um, you want, you, you're mitigating one more step. So that, that's how yes. you can also save money in that regards. That makes sense. And I will say, because the way that we've been paying our suppliers has been through Alibaba Trade Assurance, mm -hmm. but we are at a point now where we have a really good relationship with the majority of our suppliers. We've been working with them for years and they have been starting to ask us if we can pay them via direct bank deposit. So for a couple of them, we're already considering doing that. I'm not going to lie that I was a little bit scared in the beginning, but, um, but as you said, like it is, I didn't even consider the fact of time that it takes a while for them to, to receive it through, um, through Alibaba trade assurance and everything. And they probably won't be purchasing materials or anything like that until they receive that money to make sure. But another thing is that when, Alibaba Trade Assurance is great, especially if you're just starting with your supplier, but um, the supplier needs to pay a fee for using that platform. So that is cutting into their into their um, profits or they're going to be charging you that fee and that means you're charging more, even if you're sending them in dollars without like the benefit yep. of sending them in their own currency, you're already going to be, to be paying more because as Ryan said, it's the money is going through 
someone else. So there's a fee associated to that. But um, even that that's really um, interesting. You mentioned about paying them in their own currency as well, because again, you can be strategic and sometimes you can get a lower if depending on the exchange rate of the dollar to the yuan then or whatever currency your supplier right. is using, then you can actually get a cheaper quote ordering the exact same thing. But another thing that I actually forgot to mention, but one thing that I loved um, when using ping pong that I didn't realize the benefit of it is that when you apply for a currency to receive a currency, uh, so for example, we are in receiving in dollars, but we wanted to sell in the UK. So we uh, applied to receive in British pounds with ping pong. Mm -hmm. You can request a letter, a bank letter, because as Ryan said, it, they're connecting you with a local bank. So you don't have to do that on yourself. You're going to have a bank account there through ping, ping pong and you can apply for a letter and a lot of people have been having a hard time verifying their bank information because when you add a payment account, Amazon requests uh, bank information and proof of this or that, or they might suspend your account. But with this letter that ping pong offers, it's so easy. I was so excited because I don't know, as soon as I opened my UK account a while back, it got suspended. I needed to prove a yep. bunch of things. And then I used ping pong for our Mexican, Canadian, now Japan. And it was so easy. It was awesome. So that's definitely another perk that I didn't even realize you guys had when, when I signed up. Yeah, you can open a bank account and receive 10 different currencies literally in three to five minutes. Once you have your initial bank account, you can just apply and start having a UK bank account or a Euro bank account. Uh, the the account the currencies that you can receive are the US dollar, the Mexican peso, the Canadian dollar, the pound, the euro, the Japanese yen, the Australian dollar, the Singapore dollar, and then also the Hong Kong dollar. Um, and I think the Durham's in there too from the United Emirates. So those that being said, you can receive in those currencies, but then you can also pay out to 170 different countries. So paying to India for your supplier that you can pay in local currency that way. And there's constantly regulations that the reason why there's so many different, um, you know, global regulation for financial resources. You mentioned the, the letter that Amazon requires. It's because they don't want to pay out a non-legitimate entity. And Amazon's always trying to make sure that they're paying legitimate bank accounts or sellers because yeah. there is, you see this constantly in the news, like what's real, what's fake. Are you a real seller? Are you just a, um, a hacker or something like that. Of Everyone's trying to make sure that money is going to regulated individuals. And that's what we do from the get go is once you sign up, go through that process, we verify your, your entity information, your legitimate business. And we'll do that with the suppliers too. So you mentioned with trade assurance with Alibaba, we don't have anything quote unquote trade assurance, but what we do is we actually validate every single supplier entity before you even can send a single quote unquote okay. dollar there so for there's no way to dispute if something goes wrong um th this is a direct bank deposit so it's not like trade assurance that you can dispute to get a refund but you do validate their bank account to make sure they're legit so we yeah we actually we request from we request multiple invoices or an invoice from the supplier and we will actually go and validate to make sure this is a legitimate entity on uh on that end to make sure that they're not a shell corporation or anything of where it would cause maybe a cause or confusion or even hesitation because we want to make sure that money is going to a legitimate entity. So we're protecting not just ourselves, but the banking partnerships that we have in that regards. Um, so to validate that they are a legitimate entity. Now, again, if there is a if there is something like with product, like if they send you the wrong color or anything, that's not something that we have any sort of say or dispute that's between seller and supplier. So that, that relationship, like you said, is, is in touch and has to be dealt with that. But yeah. any sort of, if it's on our side with facilitating money, we're going to make sure it's safe and secured and gets there day of or next day to make sure that your money is safe and secured. So um, like I said, we're eliminating those barriers if, you know, they, t um, uh, so that fees are, you know, not astronomical. We want to make sure that you're paying a legitimate entity so that we take that different approach, if that makes sense. So they're not part of a network that they have to pay a fee to be a part of. Um, 
So believe it or not, another benefit is to give you more flexibility um, as an e-commerce seller, because if you have suppliers in multiple countries around the world, they may not be a part of Alibaba's network. Yes. You want to make sure that you have that capability and, and kind of negotiation power in that regard. That so. is a great point. And a lot of people, you know, ever since, honestly, the whole pandemic started and even during um, Chinese New Year's, a lot of people are scrambling, like, how can I get product? I'm out of stock. They're not working. So a lot more people are interested in suppliers in other countries. And sometimes it's not provided by Alibaba or they don't have Alibaba trade assurance because, as I said, they need to pay a fee to Alibaba in order to use that. So a lot of people are on edge of like, oh, how should I send the money or what? But one strategy could be where you pay via Alibaba trade assurance for the deposit to make sure they're actually going to produce the product and pay the remaining balance through ping pong. You can, you can negotiate uh, with your supplier, something like that. If you're afraid that they're just going to run with your money and not produce the product, you can always adjust because you will end up saving money by going with ping pong, not only with credit card fees, if you pay via credit cards or with the wire transfer, but also the buffer that they, they charge for using the Alibaba. Um, platform. Yeah. And that, that's the thing that they will always pass on to you as a seller. Like you may not think that, but if they're giving you an invoice, that invoice, I promise you has a baked in four to 5% upcharge just on the currency conversion alone. On top of like you mentioned, Ali, any sort of fees that you know, they might charge because they're trying to recruit all their money back. They don't want to just eat the cost for doing business. Yes. They want to somehow get some sort of that, those funds back from uh, whomever they're working with. So it's all part of that relationship building that you're working with the, the supplier. They might understand that if you can pay them in local currency, they might bump you up that list of, hey, priority list of uh, manufacturing goods and you can work on those quicker. So there's all these tactics they can use in terms of capabilities. If they only request in US dollar, that's also because not many people have the capability to just reach in their pocket and pay out in local currency. They're trying to do it for sake of convenience, but with convenience, again, comes cost. So yes. when you have that capability and you work with somebody who say, listen, I can actually pay you out this in local, your local, uh, to your local bank account, directly with that currency and you don't have to pay any sort of fees, you know, what's the downside of that? And then you can say, what was that cost look like? And you can compare lots of savings, even if it's 2%, that's money that again, buy 10,000 more units or uh, however, yes. however much you can use at the end of or the day or the faster, year. Or uh, even faster, you know, lead time priority mm -hmm. in terms of relationship with your supplier. If you really need something last minute, they might be willing to do it because the money gets there fast as it's in their own currency. Right. And exactly. another thing, because I know there are so many options, as you said, ping pong is business to business. But another thing that we're, we haven't used it yet, but we're going to start using is you can pay um, VAT, value added tax, yep. right? Mm -hmm. When you need to file, um, you don't file through ping pong, but you can make the payments that are due through ping pong as well. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, you can actually, um, once you have the entity information, um, wherever you're selling, if you're selling in Canada or Europe, you pay what's called a value added tax or a GST. Um, it's like a sales tax, essentially, if you're in the United States to make it more uh, apples to apples. So Amazon will do the groundwork for you. They'll say like, hey, we'll collect all these things, uh, these additional fees, but you have to remedy that to the tax professionals. So every quarter, it just depends on who you are as a seller and how much you're selling, how often you have to pay those additional fees. You can use your ping pong account in that local currency. So if I'm selling in Canada, I can pay out in Canadian dollar um, and I can use those funds to just pay my VAT or GST. And uh, you don't have to associate any sort of transaction fees with that. So that's also another added bonus you can do with us. Yeah. So that, yeah, as you said, it's another great point into keeping that money uh, in the ping pong account to manage your international businesses everywhere and not paying every time if you just deposit your money in your US account, for example, every time it gets through ping pong, you might be missing out on some of some of the benefits of using that money for other purposes. Absolutely. Right? And if you're not just selling on Amazon, if I'm selling in Shopify in Canada too, or if I'm selling in, um, we talked about marketplaces like Wayfair, Zulily, um, any sort of marketplace internationally, 
if they are if third party allows it, we're, we're pretty much going to tie to all of this. So if you have one platform, you can see holistically how much is coming in from each of those resources. Um, and I have that holistic review. I can create even a sub account login for my accountants so they can go in there, pull that CSV file and just upload it to their accounting software, whether it's zero or QuickBooks or whatever it is, and just integrate it that way. Uh, but they don't have the, you can set almost baby proof, if you will, on they don't, they can't make any sort of payments to manufacturers or suppliers, or if you have a VA that you only want them to be able to pay a certain amount every month, you can set that up as a sub account so that they can log in and they can just receive funds. So more protection around just yeah. account login features like that. Oh, that's awesome. And you answered my last question. That was oh. the accounting integration, if there was. So the way that you would integrate with any account software is by downloading the CSV files of all the transactions. Yeah, so that's the thing. We are constantly listening to what sellers need and trying to optimize that process. So we've heard, obviously, it'd be great if API would tie directly to those things. Right now, that's not available for everyone, but we are actually working so that the API becomes available down the road. Um, so that can tie directly to that. But the easiest thing would be just to download and re-upload. Um, so that, that's an extra step. But uh, really exciting things are happening for us in terms of just our partnership network, in terms of what we're going to be allowing other people to tap into uh, just trusted resources. And then even just those integrations, like I said, API into your favorite tools or even payroll integration, being able to pay out mass uh, pay, like when you have employees around the world, whether it's VAs or um, your sourcing agents or anyone that's under your umbrella, allowing you to mass pay out on a time efficient schedule where there's no fees and on a regional basis depending on like banking holidays and whatnot, having this really cool product that will allow you to pay out to your employees internationally in local currency so that they don't pay those fees and it gets to their bank account quickly and effectively and they're not waiting on their money. That's another thing that we're working on quickly and uh, effectively as well. Oh, that's awesome. And that's, that's really exciting because that's what Sumner and I have been working on. We're starting to plan our outsourcing strategy. And if you have ever read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss, he's all about the geo arbitrage and, and, you know, like earning in one money in one currency, spending in another, and then paying in another lower and lower. So that's what we are going to try to do. And ping pong would definitely be useful for that. I didn't even think about that because I didn't think of like a VA as a business, but it is business to business. Right. There, are, We are mm -hmm. going to be claiming that payment in our taxes and all that. So that's awesome. And let me just tell you that one thing that my, my personal request is for you guys to add the Brazilian real to your currency. Right, <laughs> exactly. We well, and that's the to thing. we're starting to expand to Brazil too. So we're excited about that. Absolutely. And that's the thing is, you know, every country, if you believe it or not, every country, even every state in the United States has their own financial regulations. Yes. So depending on what, what happens and the opportunities available, those are always something that we're trying to integrate um, into our fold as well. So it's, it's something that we're really excited about to grow as the, the world economy grows in e-commerce. That's why I say we're an e-business solution. We're not just an Amazon solution. Yes. There's a lot of just Amazon solutions. But everyone knows that in 2020, if I was just selling on Amazon, you had a problem if you weren't just selling in other marketplaces as well. You had a cash flow problem. You had inventory problem. Right now we have FBA problems, how much we inventory we can sell in there. But if you're smart and you actually build a global business, you can have tools like ping pong to help you talk individually to each of those components, but have it all in one place. Yes. And I think market expansion is so... It's such a great strategy to grow your business because you put so much time and work into developing your product, into find reliable suppliers, into take wonderful product images and, and crafting amazing bullet points to just use it on one marketplace where you could be just copying and pasting pretty much that same thing and just adjusting the logistics of the shipments across all over the world across the different Amazon marketplaces, which we are um, having wonderful results on that. And then across sales channels as well, Shopify and Etsy, Mercado Libre and all that. 
Um, so really, really exciting. And I'm so glad that you were able to join us on this video today because we, I, I, as soon as I started using ping pong, I said something we need to tell everyone about this because it's starting to solve so many of the annoying problems that I constantly had because I'm responsible for all of our logistics and financial side of the business. And, he puts it all on you. What was that? <laughs> he puts that all on you. No, I kidding. know, <laughs> but he does some stuff that I wouldn't even right. want to touch it. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I'm responsible for all that. And I was always like so stressed out trying to figure out because it's not only the step-by-step -step things of doing, it's finding the information on how to do that's sometimes that's the most stressful of like okay how would i go about creating um creating a bank account in the uk it's not just like oh follow all of these steps it's figuring out how to do what i need and responsibilities and all that so we got so excited about this tool that we wanted to make sure to share and i'm so grateful that you were able to come here on the channel too you know, give you your, your inside perspective because we just started using, it's been two months and we're super excited to use more and more uh, different aspects of the tool. So um, if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments below, but also you can um, find Ryan, Ryan, tell everyone where people can find you and also um, content about ping pong if they want any tutorials or anything like that. Yeah, so the best way where all those videos are gonna live uh, both our crossover commerce podcast, as well as just tutorials would be on YouTube. Just subscribe to ping pong payments. Um, hopefully the link will be below. And then myself, you can actually follow me on either LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, we not, I mean, WeChat, I'm on WeChat, but you can find me on uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all, all the social media profiles uh, up to date on all the new live podcasts that we're doing. We've hit 111. Like you mentioned, uh, we've, we've, you were on there and uh, we need to get you guys back on again because we're uh, about the supplier side of things. Yes. People are constantly just asking how are we are manufacturing? How are we figuring out globally how all this works? But yeah, go ahead and follow me on social media and then check out yeah. our YouTube page. Subscribe to that. That's the easiest way to find out all the good resources. Yes. And we'll make sure to put all of the links to the social profiles and um, ping pong as well with the tutorials and everything in the comments below in the description. Also, we do have an affiliate link just as a disclaimer for you to sign up for ping pong. We forgot to say that it's free. It's free to sign up. The yeah. only way that ping pong makes money is the 1% when you decide to to withdraw that money, correct? Yeah, when, when it exchanges my Yeah. So, no, there's no upgrade. So, it's okay. free to sign up. There's no uh, monthly maintenance fees or anything like that. There's no transaction fee. It's only when money gets converted that's when we make money. And the 1% is the maximum we'll ever charge you. Believe it or not, the more the more money that you convert through our ecosystem, the more, less our fees become. So you can actually do like 0.8%, 0.6%. Like oh, you can really? start, you have that negotiation power with us too. So the more you use us, this is our partnership of the more you use us, the more you're going to be able to save down the road. As oh, well. I didn't know that. That's really exciting. And I actually went back and calculated um, the, I, I, so far we just started, so we've been charged 1% with ping pong, but I went back to the transactions through Amazon right before we signed up and it was around 2% that we were paying. Right. So right in there, we just, we were saving 1% plus being strategic about when we withdraw with the exchange rate. So that's really exciting. Um, and Absolutely. yeah, so if you guys have any questions at all about ping pong or for Ryan or for myself, if you want to request any more videos, tutorials, we'll make sure to reply as much as we can. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also sign up to our Facebook group. We're always posting all of the Amazon news updates and resources and everything. For example, with ping pong, as soon as we found out about that, we posted on our Facebook channel or Facebook group. So you guys, if you were part of it, you would have known right away. But thank you so much, Ryan, for joining. I hope to talk to you soon. Maybe we'll go back on the podcast, which, by Absolutely. the way, is one of our favorite podcasts. They have amazing guests and, and <laughs> super helpful content. I really love it. But yeah, thank you Appreciate so much, it. Ryan. Thanks, everyone. Bye.